Jet streams are relatively narrow bands of strong winds in upper levels of the atmosphere. The winds blow from west to east in jet streams, but the flow often shifts to north and south. Jet streams follow the boundaries between hot and cold air. Since it is hot and cold air boundaries are more pronounced in the winter, jet streams are the strongest from both the northern and southern hemisphere winters. Recall from the previous session that the global wind patterns will be like if the Earth was not rotating. The warm air rays in the equator will move towards both poles. We saw that Earth's rotation divided the circulation into three cells. The Earth rotation is responsible for the jet stream as well. The motion of the air is not directly north and south, but is affected by the momentum the air has and it moves away from the equator. The reason has to do with the momentum and how fast a location on or above the Earth moves relative to the Earth axis. The momentum of the air as it travels around the Earth is conserved, which means as the air that's over the equator starts moving toward one of the poles, it keeps its eastward motion constant. The Earth below the air, however, moves slower as the air travels towards the poles. The result is that the air moves faster and faster in its easterly direction relative to the Earth's surface below, the farther it moves from the equator. In addition, with the three cell circulation mentioned previously, the regions around 30 degrees south and north and 50 degrees and 60 north and south are areas where the temperature changes are the greatest. As the difference in temperature increases between the two locations, the strength of the wind increases. Therefore, the regions around 30 degrees north and south and 50 60 north and south are also regions where the wind in the upper atmosphere is the strongest. The 50 60 north south region is where the polar jet locates and the subtropical jet locates around 30 degrees north. Jet streams vary in the height of 4 to 8 miles and can reach speeds of more than 275 miles per hour, or you talk about 442 kilometers per hour. The actual appearance of jet stream results for the complex interactions between many variables, such as location of the high and low pressure systems, warm and cold air, and seasonal changes. They meander around the globe, dipping and rising in altitude, latitude, splitting at times and forming edges, and even disappear altogether to appear somewhere else. Jet stream also follow the sun, in that as the sun's elevation increases each day in the spring, the average latitude of the jet stream shifts polarward. By summer in the North Hemisphere, is typically found near the US Canadian border. As autumn approaches, the sun elevation decreases. The jet stream's average latitude moves towards the equator. A valley breeze develops during the day and the sun hits the land surface and air at the valley bottom and sides. As the air hits, it becomes less dense and buoyant and begins to flow gently up the valley sides. The vertical ascent of the air rising along the sides of the mountain is usually limited by the presence of temperature inversion layer. When the ascent airs, currents encounter the inversion they are forced to move horizontally and then back down to the valley floor. This creates a self-contained circulation. If conditions are right, the rising air can condense and form into cum cumulonimbo clouds. During the night, the air along the mountain slope begins to cool quickly because of long-wave radiation loss. As the air cools, it becomes denser and begins to flow downslope causing a mountain breeze. Convergence of the draining air occurs at the valley floor and forces the air to move vertically upward. The upward movement is usually limited by the presence of temperature inversion, which forces the air to begin moving horizontally. Again, the horizontal movement completes the circular cell system. 
A catabat wind is the technical name for a drainage wind, a wind that carries high density air from a higher elevation down a slope, under the force of gravity. Such winds are sometimes called fall winds, the spelling catabat also can use. So the catabat name comes from the Greek word katabati, katabasis, means descending, this technical name for this drainage wind, called by lower temperature. A sea breeze describes a wind that blows from the ocean inland towards land. This breeze occurs more often in the spring and summer months because of the greater temperature difference between the ocean and nearby land, particularly in the afternoon when the land is the maximum heating from the sun. During the day, the, sand, the sun heats up both the ocean surface and the land. Remember about the specific heat? Water is a good absorber of the energy from the sun. The land absorbs much of the sun energy as well as a specific a sensible heat. However, water heats up much more slowly than land and the air above the land will be warmer compared to the air over the ocean. So again, the circle, the warm air over the land will rise through the day, causing a low pressure at the surface. Over the water, high surface pressure will be formed because the colder air. To compensate, the air will be sinking over the ocean. The wind will blow from the higher pressure over the water to lower pressure over the land, causing the sea breeze. The sea breeze strength will vary depending on the temperature difference between the land and the ocean. At night, the role is reversed. The air over the ocean is now warmer than the air over the land. The land loses heat quickly after the sun goes down and the air above cools too. This can be compared as a blacktop road. During the day, the blacktop road heats up and becomes very hot to walk on. At night, however, the blacktop has given up the added heat and it cools to the touch. The ocean, however, is able to hold on to the heat after the sun sets and not lose it easily. This causes the low surface pressure to shift to over the ocean during the night and the high surface pressure to move over the land. This causes a small temperature gradient between the ocean surface and the nearby land at night and the wind will blow from the land to the ocean, crea creating the land breeze. How does wind affect ocean circulation? Surface ocean currents are primarily affected by wind pattern. Trade winds can push water along the top of the ocean and aid to the formation of the surface currents. One example is the wind-driven circulation affecting an ocean current is the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream takes very warm water from the Gulf of Mexico and parts of the Caribbean Sea and transports it northward. During the winter, the Gulf Stream can have a great effect on storm systems along the east coast of the United States. For example, nor'easters can strengthen and grow over the Gulf Stream and bring heavy snow or rain, strong winds and damaging beach erosion at the east coast. It used to be thought that the flow of the Gulf of Max the Stream alone helped keep Europe warm in the winter. But this has been recently shown that the temperate climate of the Great Britain comes from warm air moving along with the Gulf Stream over the Atlantic Ocean. This keeps temperatures along the western coast of Europe milder than continental areas far the east away from the coast. So why is this deeper cold water saltier than warmer surface based seawater? One answer, it is due to freshwater runoff. As the ocean surface fresh water from rivers or precipitation falling from the sky mixes with the ocean water and dilutes, as a result, the water of the ocean surface is less salty than the water below it. Another answer is formation of ice at high latitudes. In the North Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, when the air gets cold enough for ice to form on the surface of the ocean, that dissolved salt is excluded from the ice that forms, 
leading to cold and extra salty water forming at this latitude as the fresh water becomes ice. This very dense water sinks to deep levels in the ocean and is spread out from there. The bottom topography of the ocean and the arrangements of the continents help steer this deep salt water around the world. From this we can get underwater currents that can be thousands of feet below the surface of the ocean. In a way, the thermohaline circulation can work together with wind-driven circulation and create a conveyor belt that circulates around the world. Thus, the combined thermohaline circulation and wind-driven circulation also has been dubbed the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt and is responsible for the climate. Any changes in that circulation might have, might have a huge impact on the climate.